welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for tuning in and spending a few moments of your day with me. You're watching Unbiased Magic Reviews, the most objective magic review channel here on YouTube. And today I've got another requested top five magic review for you. If you're new to my channel, these are the type of magic reviews that you can expect to find here. You're not going to find these on anyone else's channel. If you are new here, you should know that I have no affiliation with any magic companies. I have no disclosures and nobody has asked me to, you know, push any of this material toward you guys. So what I was asked is I was requested to do a review on my picks for the best five um, marked deck effects that I use regularly that I've learned over the years that I keep going back to over and over again. And I think you guys are going to really be pleased with this because I put forth some really strict criteria for this top five review. We're gonna start out with a couple of simple general ideas, um, some recommendations, and then we're gonna go over a couple of notable mentions and then the top five list itself. So you guys can use any mark deck that you want to. I personally would recommend that you check out the Penguin mark deck. And the reason is because it's $5 a deck if you buy them by the brick. And so you really can't beat that. The markings are really easy to read and it's really easy to use. And that's from somebody that wears glasses, right? So I have a hard time seeing anything small and I have a lot of marked cards. I have a lot of marked decks and many of them I can't really use because the marks are just way too small. That's the reality of it. Um, and when you do use a marked deck, you have to use it in a non-direct way because you never want to be get caught staring at the cards. That's really what you don't want to be caught staring at the back of the card. Um, and with the Penguin deck, there's a lot of different ways that you can get your glimpse, your peek, um, use indirect keys and stuff. And so this is what you need to learn how to do if you want to use a mark deck efficiently. You know, I do like that with the Penguin deck because of where the marks are, you have a lot of versatility. Like you can get a peek even from just a riffle you can just riffle down the spectator says stop. You can show them the card. And you already know that the card they looked at was the seven of diamonds, but it looked so innocent, you know, it looked so innocent. So you're in the driver's seat completely, you know? You can also get a really nice glimpse or peek from a dribble. So you can dribble, they could say stop, or you can say you wanna go some more, wherever they want to, and then you can show them the card. And then of course, you'll know that the card that they saw was the six of hearts. So there's some really nice peaks or what I call really glimpses that are you'd be able to get with the Penguin deck. And I found from using it that I can very quickly find the card that a person just randomly names from a spread, just from a simple, really quick scan. Um, maybe not something that a lot of people would be comfortable with trying to do, but with practice, it really becomes second nature. So these are just a couple of simple general points about the Mark deck that you may find useful. Let's get into my criteria for this top five review. So the strict criteria I came up with was as follows, was I wanted this review to focus on mark deck effects that just use one deck. Um, there are a lot of marked deck effects or marked card deck effects that utilize two decks, maybe an invisible deck and a marked deck, stacked deck and a marked deck, you know, all this kind of stuff, but I wanted to limit this to just one deck in play, you know, so there's one deck in play. Um, the next criteria was that there's no stacks. So you're not using any kind of stack deck because if you combine a stack with a marked deck, then there's a lot more options, obviously. Like for instance, if you were to have the spectator just cut somewhere and look at a card, you know, there's, you, you should not be able to know what that card is, but because you can read the next card in the stack, then you'll know what card they cut to. So utilizing a mark deck with a stack is very, very powerful. And there are many good routines that involve that, but I'm not including any of them here because this is just basically a review that has to do with just using the marked deck. You know, if there's a lot of interest, I might do another top five review sometime here in the future, utilizing a mark deck with other gaffs or gimmicks or stacks. Um, Touching on that, I also limited this to no other gimmicks or gaffes, only the marked deck, that's it. So we're not utilizing any crimps, we're not utilizing any double facers or double backers or anything like that. 
Um, it's just the mark deck. That's the only, that's really the only gaff that you're really using for any of these routines. Um, another criteria I set forth was that all of these routines are done from a shuffle deck in use. So before you start, the spectator can shuffle the cards. And that really is one of the strengths of the mark deck is that the spectator can shuffle the cards, which is great. And so I made, I made sure that that was emphasized in all of these routines that you're starting from a shuffle deck in use. In many of these routines, the spectator is going to shuffle them again during the routine as well. And then the final criteria was that all of these routines hide the method. Um, there's extra deception involved that's going to help you because um, there are a lot of marked deck routines out there that are not very good in their structure. And when I say that, I mean that because of the structure of the routine, it kind of telegraphs what you're doing. You never want to perform an effect like that because that leaves you at a huge disadvantage. And why do that when there are much better routines out there? So that is the criteria I set forth. And you're probably wondering, how did I find anything that actually meets that criteria since it's so strict? You'd be surprised. There's quite a few effects out there. So you're going to notice that I have actually drawn these effects from mostly from uh, magazines and books, although there's a couple that are videos as well. But the reality is almost all of these come from magazines and books. And that's because I still firmly believe that the best magic is hidden deep inside old books and magazines. And you'll see that these effects span a time period of like the last 70 years, really. Um, so we got a lot of stuff from a lot of different years. Let's take a look at some notable mentions now. My first notable mention comes from Genie Magazine, the May 2006 edition, and it is called One Face South by Bob Farmer. So basically a selected card matches an open prediction. That's what the effect is. It's really simple, easy to understand. You take out um, an open, you take out a prediction that you have, and it's a, it's a picture. It looks like this, and you're going to hand the deck to the spectator and have them shuffle the deck. Then you're going to have them deal the cards out face up in a circular pattern, just like the open prediction. And somewhere along the way, they're going to deal one card face down. Then you're able to show them that it matches your prediction. And the best part about it is that they can look at the picture all they want. They're not going to be able to find the card that they've selected face up, even in the picture that you're using as your open prediction. It's a really diabolical effect because it hides the method really well. They'll never ever begin to imagine that the method is a marked deck of cards. They'll never figure that part out. And it's really easy to perform. There's no difficult sleight of hand. Um, and very fooling to your spectators and a lot of fun to perform. It doesn't completely meet my criteria for the top five, which is why it's just a notable mention here. But if you're looking for something really visual and fun, I think you're going to like it a lot. It's very easy to perform. Moving along to my second notable mention, we have another effect from a magic magazine, and this is called Foretold by Ed Marlowe. You can find this in Marlowe's magazine number six. This comes from the 80s. And the effect is that four cards are predicted and arrived to from a shuffle deck. That's basically what it is. You're going to be making some predictions. The, the spectator shuffles the deck. Um, they're going to cut the deck into four piles. And then you're basically going to shuffle the piles and then uh, count the cards. And then um, you, you, know, you can't control how many cards are in each pile. Yet the card that you get to from each pile determines is determined by how many cards are in each pile and it matches your prediction. So even practicing the effect, you'll be amazed that it works out because you'll be like, wow, that's crazy that that actually works out. And again, it really hides the method of using a mark deck really well, because again, it's not something that you would think that people would suspect at all um, because of how elaborate it is. There's no difficult sleight of hand. And even though I use the name Ed Marlowe. You might think that there's some really difficult sleight of hand. There's not. You just have to be able to do a couple of overhand shuffles, and that's really it. All right, my third notable mention for you guys is an effect that is not even a marked deck effect, but one that I've adapted to use with marked cards because I feel that it's so much stronger with a marked deck, and that is Mark Calabrese's Red Medicine. Now, I've gone over this effect in the past. And I keep going back to it over and over again because it is just very, very strong to spectators, gets really strong reactions. 
And there's two versions that I utilize with this. I'm gonna go over both of them with you. There's an easy version and more difficult. So the easy version is you let the spectator shuffle the cards and then you take out your business card and you say you're gonna write a prediction of sorts. In this case, the prediction would be like the six of clubs and you put it down there. And then you, tell, you go through the red medicine just where you have them take the deck under the table or reverse a card. And then when you spread the cards face up, of course the only face down card is gonna be that six of clubs, obviously, you know, cause that's the card that you read. <laughs> so that's the easy version, right? The more difficult version is that while the spectator shuffling the cards, you ask them to name a card, just name any random card. Like in this case, they might name, I don't know, let's say that they name like the ace of diamonds, for instance, right? Cause it's a very commonly named card. And so they've already shuffled the cards themselves and you just need a soft working surface where you can spread the deck because essentially what you're going to do is you're going to be spreading the deck like this and you're going to say do you have any idea where your card is and they're going to say no and it's that motion that you're just going to gather up the spread and go right into it and you could see how quickly that i could scan and locate where that ace of diamonds is because um, these cards are really easy to read. That's the truth of it. It takes less than three seconds to do it. And you have this really nice motivation, which you don't realize, because when you spread the cards out like that, when you spread out these cards and you say to the spectator, is there any way that you could know, as you run your finger across, any way you could know where your card is? They're, they may, yes or no, they're not, they're not gonna know where their card is, as you just said, it's, I mean, is there any way you can know where your card is? They're gonna say no, right? So obviously, you know, you're just emphasizing that they shuffled the cards, but the reality is, is that you're really locating it at the same moment. So I would urge you to practice with the Mark deck because you will find that with very minimal practice, you'll be able to very easily scan a spread to know exactly where a name selection is. And that opens up doors to lots of different other effects. Anyway, these are the three notable mentions I have for you guys. All right, let's get into my list of top five marked deck effects. This list is arranged from least to most favorite, although I like all of them a lot. I would perform any of them. I think they're all really strong, but as we get closer to number one, the impossibility factor goes way up. Um, although, how could I really say that? They're all really impossible in the spectator's mind. So starting out with number five, we have an effect from Al Baker called Mental Discernment. And uh, you can find this in his book called Pet Secrets. Uh, this is from the 1950s, I think it was 1951. And the effect is really simple. The spectator is going to shuffle the cards before you begin. You're gonna have them select a card and then take it out of spread, look at it and then it's gonna be shuffled back into the deck themselves. And then all you do is you just spread the cards out face up on the table and you're going to hold onto their wrist as you look at all the cards face up until you finally get a, a sensation that one of these cards is more important than any other ones and it's their selection. Very quick, simple effect, but it really hides the method well because when you're selecting their card, it's done with the cards face up. Um, and so again, the spectators will never even begin to imagine the method that you're using for it. Um, excellent effect, mental discernment, Al Baker, number five. Okay, moving along to number four for my top five mark deck effects, we have a very, very well known effect and variations, and that is Al Koran's double thought. This was originally published in his book, Professional Presentations, although you can find variations all over the place. Um, just to name a few, Steve Beam, he put Marked Phenomenon in his Semi-Automatic Card Tricks Volume 1 book. You can find Think As I Think in Wayne Dobson's Marked for Life. Um, you can also find a version uh, I can't remember the name right now offhand, but it was in the book called Hidden in Plain Sight by Boris Wilde and Charles Kirk. So there's a lot of different variations out there. Now the real difference between those variations and the original version is that the original version, um, after the cards were selected, you would write down your card on a little slip of paper and so would the spectator. 
um, and then when you would reveal their card, they would read it off the paper and you would reveal it and vice versa. So I think that really the variations that exist nowadays is just that they've gotten rid of the idea of writing down the card on a piece of paper. If you're not familiar with Double Thought, this is what it looks like to give you an idea. A deck of cards is shuffled. Uh, the spectator gives you half of the deck and you're going to select a card um, out of that half or let them select a card out of that half put it on the table and vice versa. Um, and then the cards are buried back into each respective half. And then you're going to uh, trade halves and you're gonna find the spectator's card, they're gonna find your card. Because of the method that's involved, um, the spectator will never ever begin to imagine how it's possible because even though they may figure, well, of course you could find my card, but what they're never gonna be able to figure out is how they found your card. And the best part is that the motivation is there, so you don't have to worry about it in terms of the motivation of when you get your glimpse, because when, you're, when you ask the person, like, what card did you think of, and you're turning over the card that they thought of, you have all the time in the world as you're turning it over to read the card that's right next to it on the table. So definitely, a very, very easy, almost self-working card trick that looks utterly impossible to your spectators. And I would say that if you don't perform it at least a handful of times, then you probably shouldn't be using a marked deck. So that's number four on my top five list of best marked deck effects. Moving along to number three, we have an effect from Boris Wilde, and this is the ideal effect from his project, The Marked Deck Project. Now, the reason I included this is because the actual um, moment that you get your glimpse or your peak is so devious and sneaky that even if your spectators even suspected at all that maybe that that was the method, it will be totally, they totally would refuse to accept that because Apparently, you start spreading the cards and you tell them you want them to make a selection and you look away as they take out a card. They're going to take out a card, they're going to look at it, and then you're going to spread a little more and just say, here, put it back, maybe here. They put it back in there and, and that's it. And it's great because it looks so hands-off. You never looked at the deck. And then all you do is spread the cards on the table for a second and you mention to them, is there any way I could know anything about where your card is? They may say something, you say, yeah, I'm, I, I know it's relatively in this area and you already know what their card is. You'll be able to give them the deck and say, why don't you give this a really good shuffle? They can give it a good shuffle. And now the actual revelation can be whatever you want it to be. You're totally in the driver's seat. So depending upon what you want to do, you could reveal the card any way that you want. It's really up to you, which is great, which is why it really is the ideal effect. It's so fair because it is probably the most fair pick a card trick you're going to find because the spectator shuffled the deck before you started. They picked a card. You weren't, your head, your head was turned the whole time. They put it back and then they got to almost immediately get to shuffle the deck again. Um, and so it's going to feel like there's absolutely no way that you, that you could have had any control of any sort or know anything, which is why this is number three on my list of top five Mark Deck effects. All right, moving along to my number two pick for the top five Mark Deck effects, we have an effect from Magic Magazine. This comes from the 1981 issue, uh, number 275, and the effect is called Liar by Leslie Anderson. This is a blockbuster mental effect. Uh, totally hides the method completely your spectators will just be completely amazed by this. And this is what it looks like. You have the spectator shuffle the deck before you begin. You tell them to cut off like 15 cards or so. They're gonna cut off like 15 cards. You tell them to look at them and to think of any one that they have in their hand there. Just concentrate on one card, so they do. So why don't you give them another shuffle so there's no way anyone knows where your card is you're thinking of. You take the cards back and you tell them, I'm gonna show you the cards one at a time. I want you to name them as you see them, but when you see your card, lie and tell me a totally different card. In fact, think of a different card now that you're gonna name just so that way there's no hesitation. And so you say, I'm gonna look away so that way I don't see anything. So you look away and they start naming the cards as you go through them one at a time. And when they get to their card and they lie, you're like, oh, I sense you lied right there, that's your card. 
and it's so powerful because it's so direct your spectator will not begin to imagine how it's possible when i performed it people asked me to repeat it and i repeated it three or four times in a row and they just couldn't figure it out totally blew them away left me kind of laughing because it's so simple yet so diabolical and again the method is hidden so well in the presentation and performance of it that they'll never figure it out ever and because you never looked at any cards and because you didn't look at them, they can't figure out how you could possibly know this. Keep in mind, they're shuffling the deck. So it's hard, you know, this is only number two because number one is, I think, just a little bit stronger, but the reality is this could easily be number one because it is that strong. My number one pick for the best Mark deck effect goes to Bob Farmer and his effect, Marcus Maximus. What a great name, right? Marcus Maximus. I really like the name a lot. You can find this in his book, The Bamo Flim Flam Conglomeration, and this is an effect for three people. The effect is really simple. Three people make selections and you find, and that's basically what it is, but it, the conditions are what make it so strong and the way that the routine is designed, it is so clever. It hides the method so well, right under the nose of the spectators. They would never begin to imagine that that's the method that you are using. You're gonna start by taking out the deck, let them shuffle it as much as they want to. Then you're gonna spread it out on the table and you're gonna tell somebody to pick out three cards. So somebody picks out three cards and you could do this you know, while your back is kind of turned. Then you gather up the spread and you tell them to divide those three cards amongst you three any way you want. They do that. When they decide finally who gets what card, you turn around and you spread the deck out and tell them to just put them back anywhere they want. They put them back in the deck anywhere that they want and you tell them to shuffle up that deck as much as you want. So there's no way I could know anything. At that point, they have to admit, you have no idea what they're thinking of. And because you barely faced them while they made their selections, while they put them back, they have to admit there's absolutely no way you could know anything. Now under these conditions, all you do is go through the pack and take out three cards. And then you look, you say, I got a sense about these three cards. You look at them and then you just ask one or two questions. Like, you know, um, I'm sensing that one of you probably has a red card, right? And with one or two questions, you can immediately tell each person what card they selected and show them in your hands that, you know, you've gotten the three cards and you know exactly which card each person selected. Now, the effect is just impossible. It is literally impossible. They will have absolutely no idea how that is possible. It's gonna completely blow them away. I really like the structure of it. I really liked how easy it is to perform. Um, and because it's for three people simultaneously under those conditions, they are going to feel that you have some kind of amazing powers that obviously you don't have, but it's going to feel like you do, which is why this is my number one pick for the best mark deck effect completely meets all the criteria that I set forth here and your spectators would never ever begin to imagine that that's the method that you're using which is just great um, so it's a lot of fun and I would urge you to get Bob Farmer's book and to try it out because I think you're really going to like it a lot anyway that is my list for top five mark deck effects I hope that this has been useful to you. If you think that I've missed something or you think that you know an effect that belongs on this list, as long as it meets my criteria, just leave us a comment below. As usual, thanks so much guys for tuning in to my magic reviews and I'll see you on the next one.